overall, when you look at the price of oil, it's been so volatile. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Well, uncertainty is everywhere. Um, obviously, we started this whole cooperation with a mind to keep a, a tab on stability on the prices, and then other events uh, took it over. Um, so I, I think the the, uh, the problems you're having, obviously, with the the extension, the run ban, um, some civil strifes all over the world. Um, uh, on, ex on, on utilized capacities in very many OPEC countries in terms of being able to reach yeah. the typical capacities that we have. Um, how much of that shell can cover, you know, it's, it's all a mixture of a whole bag. Yeah. What, what are we misreading? So what do you see for, for 2019? Are we putting too much emphasis on the, you know, the Iran and, and Venezuela shortfalls? I think so. I, I, my, my feeling is that um, those things, uh, I mean, OPEC has, uh, with some discipline, we have the capacity to uh, probably cover some of the, the gaps that you see. Uh, at the sort of prices you have today, shale will continue to be bullish. Uh, so I think we're over, over, over estimating a sudden uh, drop in, 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 in production or supply, and, and that's obviously impacting the market. Uh, overall, I think, I think the sort of figures that you have to, uh, about now, 70, 77, uh, sort of pendulum, uh, it's sort of the numbers you're going to see for the rest of the year and potentially very early in the year. Um, Minister, we're hearing about some kind of evergreen deal that OPEC would do with non-OPEC allies. What does that exactly mean? I mean, what are you talking about and would you support it? Uh, uh, well, I, I will have to know the details to know whether I will support it. I wasn't part of that meeting uh, that just took place a few days ago, but, but I know that the genesis for that uh, was a rather than have a cyclical uh, agreement for extension of cooperation that we had with Russia, there was a need to have sort of formalize it uh, so that there are automatic triggers if things happen, you know, um, and I'm sure that that is probably the basis of the, of the relations they're trying to have. Um, I don't think it's anything different from what we already agreed in terms of cooperation, in terms of trying to stabilize the world market. I think at this point, both, both producers and, and uh, suppliers are uh, decently uh, concerned about the need uh, for stability in this sector, and that's what everybody's pushing for. Minister, I say this with great respect for your previous tenure at Exxon as well, but the idea of corruption within uh, Nigerian oil is legendary. There's been different litigation, including an Italian at courts. Give us an update right now on how you're trying to clean up Nigerian oil, even with the pressure to go from onshore development uh, off to offshore development. What's the state of sanctity of contract within Nigeria? Well, well, contract is something we respect absolutely. Uh, we, we don't even quibble with that. My background is as a lawyer and as somebody who helps the president uh, superintend the sector, uh, keeping to contract is key. In terms of the corruption issues, you know that that is the base upon which this uh, president ran and has continued to be uh, one of his uh, laudable uh, achievements uh, during his tenure. Uh, we have, uh, at any point where we've had visible evidence uh, that corruption had taken place, would that be for us? Or during our time, we have gone very bullishly on those. I'm aware of the various uh, litigations that were going on. Some of them arising from facts that happened before we came into position. Uh, we are cooperating as much as we can to make sure that the international agencies and countries uh, and countries right. that are pushing uh, for prosecutions are going ahead and doing what they need to do. Well, I mean, you, you have an extremely important voice with this, including your law degree from a small school on the Charles River, just within the glow of World Series champion Boston Red Sox, I might point out. Within that, uh, Minister, is the, is the idea of law in Nigeria, and for that matter, within greater Africa. What's that trend right now? A lot of our viewers just perceive Perceive real challenges there. Where can we be in two or five years? I think where, where we are right now is absolute respect for the rule of law. And sometimes that is very limiting in terms of, I mean, you have this natural urge sometimes we are very bullish about uh, enforcement, uh, but then you've got to follow due process. And so we respect that. We respect whatever contrast Nigeria has entered. And I think increasingly, as, as Africa turns, turns, the, turns the tide over the next five years, you're going to see a lot more emphasis on just following due process, following the law, um, um, due compliance, uh, due deliveries on, on, uh, on expectations in terms of legal, legal requirements. Africa has come a long way. Nigeria definitely has come a huge milestone uh, in terms of respect for rule and order. It is something we don't even uh, quibble with. Um, Minister, looking at um, oil disruptions and just the, the price of oil in general, do you worry about shale growth and the impact that has on OPEC and its allies? It will always be a factor. Um, do I worry about it? Uh, not really. Uh, the truth is uh, technology has helped shale grow even rap more rapidly than it can. Uh, at very lower cost, they're very competitive. 
But what I've always counseled is that what this should do for OPEC is that we should go back to being the discourse producer. Uh, if we continue to pursue shale, we wonder whether they're going to increase their volumes because of a tide in price or not. We're missing the boat. The boat. And my, my attitude is uh, keep looking at your own production, keep making it more efficient, keep being the least cost producer, and then, then ultimately you're able to take uh, the shocks when they come in terms of pricing. What about demand? Is, is demand vulnerable for oil, especially in emerging markets? Everything that we've seen shows a growth in demand, not, not a very huge growth, uh, between 1.5 and 2% over the next one, two years. Uh, so and over the next 10 years, uh, the emphasis still, still would depend on, on, on the, um, uh, oil fossils, basically, and supplying the energy mix for the world. Um, uh, electric, electricity uh, is there, uh, clean fuels are there, uh, solars are there. But everything that you see in terms of 10-year projections still shows uh, that oil is, is what to watch.